They look like they're doing their morning dance. Lots of them. They're the bane of the fisherman. He's gobbling up the little fish. Cormorants. Sometimes there are so many they come like a carpet on the water. It's a little wilder this morning. And again, we have a wall of cloud. About four or five minutes ago, there was an opening there, but I wasn't ready. <laughs> the sun is obviously well risen. And our fisherman is back again today. He was very busy over there yesterday. If he's back again today, he must be having a catch. Good morning, John. Always there. Bound to be attitudes. Hello, Sandra, South Africa, Malaysia, Canberra, Australia, Dulce, that must be Mexico. Who knows if we'll get to see the sun disk this morning. Why is it we can continue watching the waves for so long? Like the fireplace, like the clouds and the stars. something infinity about all of this. That's a Canadian flag, is it? And a Mexican flag, Canadian-Mexican. Today is about a big conflict. History of big conflict. You know, maybe you're thinking about Russia and the Ukraine when you think about big conflict. And then you think about all the social media about that. And how are we going to fix that conflict? That's not going to be easy, is it? How are we going to climb these mountains? How are we going to cross these oceans? And sometimes we think that we're going to fix it. But you know, we have to remember Ephesians chapter six, it's not our text today, but there it talks about the, the battle is, is not just between forces of the flesh, there are forces of the spirit at work. And that's what's going on today in the readings. This incredible battle between Jesus and Satan. Isn't it interesting when we are baptized, part of the baptism is 
exorcism. And it's also personal renunciation. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his wiles? Do you renounce evil? So it's inside us. You remember that famous battle in present day Greece, but way back in their legends and the Battle of Troy and the Trojan horse? Imagine when your own people let in the enemy hidden in the gift of a horse. That's very much the nature of the tests we are put through regularly to discern what's good and what's not good. But it's not just some people in our city that let in the enemy. It's in our own heart. <laughs> we let in the enemy. We give in to fear. We give in to pride and arrogance. We give in to cuddling ourselves up in our little nest and not worrying about those people in trouble out there. We're, we're, we're the ones that open the door for the Trojan horse. And then the Trojan horse is laden with damage to our own selves. So, you know, all of the different battles out there, all the conflicts, all of the sores in the world, all of the evils, sometimes we want to give a speech to fix them. And the speech doesn't fix them. And sometimes there can be a big negotiation. But deep down, they're not still fixed. How are the troubles fixed? You know, I think we're going to have a big surprise when we get to heaven. It's going to become so clear to us that the, really one, the only ones who really contributed were the saints. The ones who opened up their heart completely to grace, to the Spirit. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert. And we have to remember there are two meanings of the word temptation in scriptural use of that verb, that word. And one of them is like the way we see it, you know, you put out, let's say, a little piece of cheese in front of a cat. Well, the cat can't resist going for it. So there are all kinds of little attractions that are pulled out for us and kind of to bring us down, to get us to fall in. That's one way of temptation. But another way of temptation is more like what a coach does with his players. He's training them and challenging them. They go through grueling training and they have to be with it with all their heart and all their spirit. They have to commit to it. They have to, there's an early schedule that maybe there's a dietary element to it. A lot of exercise, pushing, always pushing the boundaries. So this is the, the engagement that's needed to resolve the problems of humanity today. And that engagement is deep down inside of us. And so maybe there's some little person hidden someplace in some back corner of the world that's really praying now, that's really maybe in a terrible conflict with the spouse or with ch children, but they're responding to the Holy Spirit, like Jesus did. And that's how the first reading came about. You know, the, the freedom from Egypt didn't come about because they had a stronger army or they had smarter leaders. It came about because of God's intervention, but they worked with God's intervention. They agreed to God's intervention and there was a hard battle. The biggest battle that Moses had wasn't really the Pharaoh. The biggest battle Moses had was his own people. And that's really the biggest battle we all have is inside our own house of our own heart with the elements of our own person. And that's why prayer and fasting play such a role and get us back to that truth of It's very easy to get angry with a social media post or a television program or biased ideologies. But really, the battle is inside our heart. That's the big message today. And you know, we don't see clearly if we don't see that because there's a huge cloud over our mind about the reality. We're going to be so surprised when we get to eternal life. That 
poor little unassuming person that was so humble, so kind, so good. They're the people who, who don't give in to hatred, who don't give in to bitterness. And maybe they had their battles with bitterness, but they, they said, Lord, we leave that in your hands. That's a battle I can't fix today. It's beyond my strength. Oh, there comes a little bit of sunlight over there. Let's see if we can get in there. See that bright spot there? That has to be very close to where the sun disk is right now. Another reason for that is exactly where the boat is now, or just slightly north of where the boat is, is where we have the summer solstice, or the summer, yeah, the, it's called the summer solstice, right? The summer solstice, uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. The, um, the spring equinox, which would be in two weeks time, so we're in the, we're almost finished the darkest half of the year in the Northern Hemisphere. Wouldn't that be great if we were finished the darkest half of the year in our hearts? That our hearts would be open to that light, to that sunlight coming through from the Holy Spirit leading us into the desert, into self-renunciation to fix the world. If we really wanted to be balanced, what we would do when we read a bad article in the newspaper, a bad report in the media, we get bad news about anything, that we would use the same amount of time that we dedicated to absorbing and processing that bad news to praying, to doing something good in our own family, to allow God's grace to work because people love humility. People love people who are humble. People love people who are kind, who are forgiving. And that's a hard battle for us sometimes. That's where our big battles are. And if we're transformed there, and we resist the temptation to arrogance, to selfishness, I'm going to walk over here more to the waves. I want you to see these waves, they're wild today. Well, they're not wild. I mean, this is not the wild Atlantic way, people. You know, we have that in County Clare, from Kerry to Donegal, the wild Atlantic way. But normally you don't get to hear this much noise from the waves here. And it's not windy. Look, like it's just a little bit. There's a very, very gentle breeze, so I'm not sure. The moon is probably involved with it. I don't know all the workings of the waves. And have you ever noticed when we're sad, it's typically because we have given in to discouragement, we have become angry with somebody, we have been unkind, and our deepest sadness is really there. Sorry about that, people. Are you okay? Sorry, 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 sorry. So that's our big challenge for today, folks. Look at the two readings we have in the first reading and second reading. And the Psalm, be with me, Lord, when I'm in trouble. And the biggest trouble is inside my heart. And that's where the biggest happiness will lie and where we'll be able to make a difference in our families, in our homes, at work, with friends where people will regain hope, where people will also commit, because a great leader, you see, that's why Jesus is such a great leader. He goes out into the battle. He doesn't give us just a speech. He went out into the battle and he walked the whole process with us, prayer and fasting. You gotta take your hat off before Jesus and say, wow, 
this is real leadership. People, see you later, alligators. Hope you have a great, uh, blessed Sunday, blessed week. Uh, greetings from Magda. We had a wonderful Women's Day uh, yesterday. The celebration was amazing. Um, beautiful music, beautiful concerts, beautiful themes about music, the way of beauty, the great contribution women give. And this was done in style. I hope they're going to put together a report for you that will be on Magla website about this 8th International Day of Women. And this week, that's going to be celebrated. So hopefully it will be up soon. God bless you. See you later, alligators.